Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at generating and using NS Managed Object subclasses to make data objects easier to work with and more extensible. We'll also take a closer look at the moving parts behind core data. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. The starter project has a basic table view controller set up, and you'll fill this with fetch data from your core data store. In the previous video, you worked with NSManaged object instances directly and used the value for key and set value for key methods to access the attributes. You can imagine in a system with many entities, this could get very cumbersome, and it's possible to make a mistake typing attribute names or remembering what type to cast them to. To make things easier, you can have Xcode generate NSManaged object subclasses. This will create a class with the same name as your entity, with each attribute set up as a property. That means you can get and set data easily with the comfort of Swift's type safety. As a bonus, that also means you can add your own helper properties and methods to these classes. In Xcode 7, there's a new feature when generating an NS Managed Object subclass that actually creates two files, the main class definition and a class extension. The idea here is the main class file is yours to add your custom methods to. The class extension has all of the core data auto-generated stuff in there, which means if you update the model later on, the attribute changes are limited just to that file, which you can think of as being core data's responsibility, and the changes there won't conflict with the customizations you made in the main class file. Let's take a quick step back and continue our discussion of the core data stack. We talked about manage objects and the managed object context in the previous video. And backing the managed object context is a persistent store. This represents the actual file on disk with your data. And in theory, you could have multiple persistent stores to spread out your entities across several of them. Although in our example, there's just one store. To manage the case where there's multiple persistent stores, there's a persistent store coordinator in between. That means from the managed object context perspective, it can look like there's just one unified store, although there could be several behind the scenes, all being managed by the persistent store coordinator. If you followed the challenge for video one, then you will have updated the data model already, and then you should have reset the app once since you've changed the model. If you didn't follow the challenge from video number one, and you're just starting up with the sample project for this video, then what you'll need to do in your iOS simulator here is either say simulator, reset content and settings, which will reset all of the apps on your simulator, or just hold down here and go into the edit mode on Springboard and be sure to delete the My Devices app if you have it. And then when you build and run, you should be able to see the updated version of the app with the latest user interface. You have to do that because there's been a change to the data model and core data will get confused if there's an existing version of the app running. We'll talk about that a little in a later video, but for now, just remember to delete the app from your simulator or your device before you continue. Here's what the starter app here looks like. We've still got a bunch of starter data in here and we have the data displaying rather than just logging it out to the console, we have a list here in the table view. And if I select one, I can drill down and see the details. All right, let's head back to Xcode. Let's just have a quick look at the app delegate. If you remember from video one, we were inserting a bunch of test data and we're still doing that here, but what we're doing first is checking to see if we have some devices. If there are already some devices, that's the, if the count is zero, then we're gonna call that add test data. But if there are already some records in there, we're gonna skip over that. So that's the one part that's new. And the add test data method is still down here as usual. The second thing to notice here is that the, remember the manage object context is a property here on the app delegate. That's not always ideal. Again, this is the way that the Xcode template starts it out. And in the intermediate series, you'll look at another way to do this. But because we have the manage object context here in the app delegate, 
what I'm doing here in application did finish launching is I'm passing it down the view stack. If we have a look at the storyboard, you'll see we have a tab bar application and we have two tabs in here and we have two table views. And these two table views are going to access the data which means here in the application delegate, what I'm doing is I'm just passing the manage object context onto those objects. Let's have a look at one of those table view controllers. That's, we'll look at devices table view controller, which is the one you saw when I just ran the app. And this shows the list of devices. And you'll see it has this managed object context property. And that's the one I'm setting from the app delegate. And the rest of the code here should be similar to what you already saw in video number one. When I have a device record in the cell for row at index path, you can see I'm using the value for key to get the data out of there. Now let's have a look at the managed object subclasses. I'm going to open the data model, and we've got our two entities, one for device, one for person. And I'll just go to editor, create NS managed object subclass. It's going to ask which data model that I want to make subclasses for. We've only got the one here. And then it'll ask which entities. So I'm going to select both of them and hit next. And it's going to save the files. Let's just make sure that goes into the right group. And I'll hit create. And now you can see I've got four files here, two for each entity. If we look at the main class, this is device.swift, then you can see the comment here says to insert code here. And if I wanted to add some extra computed properties or helper methods on device, I would do that here in this file. And then there's this class extension, device core data properties. And now this is the file that core data is going to look after. So whenever I go back, if I make a change to the data model and I regenerate the files, just this file here will be replaced. And you can see it says delete this file and regenerate it if you ever change your model and you need to update this. And so here are our two properties that you saw from the data model. If you remember, we set these two properties to be non-optional, but because of some arcane core data internals, remember it's still an, an Objective-C API, that doesn't transfer over nicely to Swift. And I'm just going to re remove those two question marks and make these regular strings, which is OK, because again, in the model, we did say that these two should be non-optional, which is like they're required. Let me just do the same for person. OK, we've got our data model is the same as always. We have these new NS managed object subclasses. Now let's have a look at how to use them. I'm going to open up the devices table view controller again. And the first thing that we can do is we have this list of devices, which is an array of NS managed object. But we know that devices are device objects. So I'm going to change this to instead return an array of device objects. If I scroll down a little bit where we're loading the data, then when I execute the fetch request, I'm actually casting that as an array of NS managed object. And again, we can ask this to be an array of device objects. That's actually all we need to do. We could just go with that and have a nice typed collection like this. But again, if we go down to cell for row at index path, we're still doing it the old way. We're calling value for key, which still works because device is an NS managed object subclass. You can still call value for key and set value for key. But we can do this in a much nicer way now that we have a subclass. Before, we had to use value for key, which returns an any object. And then we had to do this casting. And then, of course, whenever you have a cast, you should do it safely. So then you have this if let wrapper around it, and then you set the data. But now you can see how much cleaner it is now that we have the subclass, which has strong typing already in there. We already know that they're strings. So we can just delete this implementation and go with this much simpler one. That covers the changes to fetching data and accessing properties. Let's just have a quick look at the changes you need to make for when you're adding data. Let's head back to the app delegate. And we'll look at that method add test data. And remember, the steps here are to get the entity and then generate an NS managed object from that. 
This is also really easy to change instead of using the NS managed object constructor. Again, because device and person are subclasses, I'm just going to switch this around to use the device. And that's actually it. We use the same constructor. So we're still going to use the entity and the managed object context. And then again, now that this is typed to be a device object, we can use the much nicer setter as well. Much nicer, easier to read typed code, and you don't have to worry about casting or the risk of setting any objects to the incorrect thing. That's it for this video tutorial, and as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. You've switched the fetching code to use the NS managed object subclass in the demo, which means your challenge is to do the same for the code that adds records. You'll find all the details in the challenge document along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.